Hey guys, you still with me? All right, this is the last video I'm gonna do on this. This is gonna be a lot shorter. I know I've went and covered a lot of ground on here, but this is gonna be how to find and adjust your fast idle screw. Now, what I'm using to make this simple is I've used this uh, Carter BBD, one of these pieces of shit, and uh, to illustrate how a lot of these look. Now, this one has two idle speed screws on it. If you see this top one here, see how it just goes directly into this little nylon uh, button? That actually does something else on the other side, but we don't care about that. So that's just a switch, but never mind that. That what it is, essentially, though, you see it just, boop, stops. That's your base idle screw. That's where it's gonna that's set your idle when it's warm. All right, be sure you you understand that. Look at the next one down here. Now this one you know is gonna be your fast idle screw for the choke because look what's in front of it. You see, if you see what's, let me back this up. See this thing right here? See that piece of metal? See how it's got steps on it this one's kind of frozen in place it's hard to maneuver but i'm going to move it here in just a second um, it's got steps on it and of course in an ideal world it would be connected to the choke plate so when the choke plate closes uh, it pulls that thing up and then it would be riding on the step that out of your that sets your fast idle up so this would be your fast idle screw i think this one over here has got one. Also, some of the, uh, it, it's got a different version of it. Uh, this one, not trying to confuse you, but this 2G here, now it's got, it kind of simplified everything. It just uses one screw, and as you can see here, this would be acting on the choke plate. Choke plate's all the way closed, it's going to be riding on the highest step here that would be a fast idle and then as the choke plate starts to open it comes down to the next step comes down to the next step and then this would be the base idle position right essentially right here can you see that see how it has to see how it would be up and then down and then down to the bottom so that's a pretty ingenious design right there i don't know why they didn't do it on this one but they didn't but anyway and i'm not going to tell you how to where you should set your fast idle speed except that you'll know you'll know when you got it where you want you don't need to have it you need to have it at a faster idle you don't need to have it set the same as the base idle because it just helps your engine warm up but then again you don't need to i wouldn't advise you to have it set up so high when you kick the choke on in the morning you start the engine it screams at like 2500 rpm because that's hard on your engine you know, just, you know, watch a couple of my videos of that Pontiac, that Bonneville, and you kind of see where it needs to be, I think. All right, let's look back at this. Uh, wish I knew what time it was. Let's look back at this quarter jet. Now, these quarter jets are a little bit different. They don't... I wonder if that just broke. Nope. I don't know how many times I've knocked this thing over. <laughs> you know, that was my hands. I made that that's, that uh, napkin holder. That was my hands in like third grade. <laughs> yep. These hands. Okay, quarter jet. Doesn't matter if it's got a hot air choke or a and electric choke it only has one speed screw idle speed screw on this side of the car where this is the driver's side of the car it's got the linkage and the connections and everything uh, this is your base idle screw it always is that's the only thing this thing does over here driver's side of the carburetor this is the idle base idle speed screw where it idles when it's hot all right the way you find the fast idle screw on one of them let me not do that again Base idle screw on one of these is you look over here at the front, on the right front of it, it's not that one, those are mixture screws. 
which we'll get into setting mixture when I feel like doing another carburetor video because I'm going to burn out on them right now. <laughs> but this little dude under here, see where we're at? Way under here, that is your fast idle speed screw for the choke system on a quarter jet. They're all under here, every one of them. So that's how you adjust it. Because if you start adjusting this one over here, uh, it ain't going to do it, man. You're going to have to. Uh, you know, the only thing when this when it's closed, the only thing that's setting that is going to be this one. Like I said, you see, it's not easy to get to. I don't know why the hell they put them over here, but that's what they did right there. That's it. So, <sighs> and um, I was going to mention something to you guys too. Uh, you ever see a quarter jet that's? Um, Looks like somebody stripped the threads out of the inlet, whether it's one of the side inlets or the front like this. Or they had to epoxy the thing back together completely and just use the external filter somewhere. Well, I'll tell you why they did that. It's because they either cross-threaded the damn thing or... Let's see if this one's still in here. I think it is. It looks like it is. Yeah, it's in there. Look real close on this if I can get my camera. See that? on the very end of the where the threads are that's a nylon gasket that goes in that recess right there it's actually still on this carburetor and what happens is nine times out of ten that joe blow working on these things puts the takes the filter out changes the filter that thing comes out with the filter housing and then it falls off somewhere the filter the new filter is always supposed to have one but he forgets it, or he doesn't know what it is. He's like, I don't know what that thing is right there. That looks like that may be something to the choke or something. I don't know what the hell it is. I didn't put it back on. And so he puts it back together, starts the engine up, and it goes drip, 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 drip. So what's Joe Blow come back to here? Now, I'm sorry. don't mean to insult any of you guys if y'all are Joe Blow, but... What Joe Blow does, he says, well, that damn thing's still loose. I guess I didn't tighten it up high enough. So he comes back out here with his big-ass damn wrench and gets back on it. He cranks her down some more. Starts engine up. Trip. 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 So he's come back out. He's scratching his head. And some of you guys know you've done this. I've done it, too, back when I was younger. So he says, well, I'll be damned, that thing must have some bad threads on it or something. I, I don't know, I'll try to tighten it up a little more. So, he uh, gets his big ass wrench back out here again. Tighten, tighten, then all of a sudden either he just can't tighten it anymore or it goes, and all the threads are boogered up on it because this is just aluminum. And that, that damn filter housing that goes in here, that's steel. So you know which one's going to give first. So, that's where all that usually comes into play. That's why you see that. Or you see somebody that's just wrapped the shit out of the filter housing threads with, with that good old uh, tape. That's why. Because this thing, once again, guys, that's, that's one of these things where people think they're second-guessing the Rochester engineers. These dudes were, did not make the money they made uh, for being idiots. They knew what they were doing. And if you follow their what they tell you to do, you won't have those problems. I have never seen one of these leak that had the gasket in place. This little nylon gasket. I've never seen one drip. I had one on a 71 Impala, the first car I ever had. That it didn't have, I guess it didn't have this, and I was too young and dumb and inexperienced and didn't know nothing about cars to even realize it, but that sucker dripped and dripped and dripped. We had to epoxy the damn filter housing in and use an external filter out here somewhere. But that's silly. It should have never had to happen like that. Um, you know, I could go on. I think I can make videos for probably the next two weeks off and on about things that people do wrong with these carburetors or don't understand about carburetors. The, not just these carburetors, any carburetors. And people, you know, there's folks that can rebuild an engine and I mean, tell you, do rebuild an engine perfectly with one hand tied behind their back, rebuild transmissions do body work, whatever on the engine, but when it comes to adjusting the damn carburetor or 
figuring out vacuum lines or know how to set mixture or whatever or know what an air bleed is or any of that they don't know what the fuck they are doing i mean they really don't that's why you see these people you know i know this may get some bad comments i don't care because i'm i'm convinced of this that's why you see all these people a lot of times that they say well i can't get that damn quadrant jet to work i've tried and tried i've done everything i know to do to it and it won't damn work hell we even tried two of them won't work I'm just going to go get an elder rock put on it. Just take it right out of the box, put it on. You won't ever have to mess with it. Well, that's right. If you want to spend 300 bucks on one of those things, which, by the way, they're just an old Carter AVS. That's all the damn thing is. But that's why people do this. That's why you go to car shows and you see elder rock, elder rock, elder rock, elder rock, elder rock, elder rock. That's exactly why, because, uh, you know, there's people they tend to view these things as too complicated or they just you know when it gets out of outside of setting the mixture screws on them and setting the idle you know when they got to pull rods out or work on the air door opening rate or something like that they're like fuck that you know i just now i'm just gonna go get me an edel brock and just put me an edel brock on there or as our dumb ass local swapping shop paper likes to print it elder brock I need me an Elder Brock and some chrome valve covers. That's what I need in a chrome timing cover also. <laughs> Man, I could guess, I hate to say that because a lot of good guys maybe do this and I'm not trying to bash anybody, but you know, it just you see such some of that stuff so much down here in this part of the country. It's like, you see a car, it's like, well, that engine's got chrome, we got chrome valve covers on it, got chrome breather, got a chrome timing cover, chrome oil pan. Well, what kind of engine? Well, it's a 305. It come out of my cousin's truck. What's done to it? Well, I ain't done nothing to it yet. It's just got stock everything in it, but, you know, I got it chromed out. Now, that's, that's a phrase you'll hear a lot down here if you ever live in Alabama and Georgia and Mississippi. <laughs> it's chromed out. That's it, man. It doesn't matter if that thing's the biggest heard there ever has been it's chromed out back when i had a mustang a series of them we would always occasionally run into these guys i had a truck had a chevy truck or some kind of ford truck or usually it's always a truck maybe it's a monte carlo or something though and they come running their trap about how bad that car was how good it ran you know how fast top end it went you know how long it burned the tires off and then it'd say, you know, they'd pop the hood open and we'd see the Edelbrock intake, we'd see the Edelbrock carburetor, we'd see chrome time cover, chrome valve covers, chrome breather with a stock paper Walmart air, air filter in it. And we'd see this, you know, you know right away, you know, what what you were looking at. And it's like, well, well, let's get them out there and line them up. Let's see what it'll do. It's like, oh, I don't know, I can't. I got to go see my girlfriend right now. She's waiting on me. I can't have time to do it. I'll come back on Saturday if y'all still here, That if you be here. Or, no, nah, I can't do it now. My transmission's messing up. Uh, I can't I can't get second gear. I can't get second gear in. Or, you know, just count them off on your fingers. Excuses. Transmission. Engine ain't running right. Bad gas. Uh, electrical problems. Girlfriend's waiting on you. Bad tires. Uh, license is suspended, don't want to get caught, you know, same bullshit. But anyway, that's, I'm just kind of <laughs> calling out these people that do this, you know, they run their traps about stuff. And it's like, well, when it gets time to get out there and actually do it, well, they got a problem. They can't do it. <laughs> it's getting late. <laughs> but anyway, we used to run into that a lot, but. You know, they run a lot of those quarter jets in that factory, that, what is that, fast factory appearing stock class. I don't know if you guys follow that, but I love that series. That's where they take any old, like old Corvettes and Novas, you know, late 60s, early 70s cars, and they have to look stock. You have to use a stock type engine, stock type carburetor, stock type tires. And I mean, they got some of these cars running insane times for that. I mean, and you would not believe the work they have to do to those things that you just can't see, but it's, you know, but they have to run quarter jets. They can't run another car, uh, another uh, kind of carburetor. Now, you know, some of the older, some of the older Corvettes and things like that, they did actually come with a hollow, a hollow like a 4160 or something like that, so. Uh, 
this thing is blinking. I don't know what it's saying, but maybe it's it says it's got 27 minutes left on my battery. But oh yeah, I'm running low on my space, so I guess I better start shutting up. But anyway, guys, I will get back into this series. I'm going to do some other videos on some different things, but I'll get back into this on how to set some basic carburetor adjustments, things like that, and how to diagnose some problems and things that you know some people may have problems with There's some guys that you know you just got a carbureted car and you don't know how to adjust it what to look for so but i hope you enjoyed this little mini series on the quadrajet please um, don't mind at all ask uh answering questions just feel free to ask me anything uh, you know so that's it i guess i'm gonna wrap this up and Go check out some YouTube videos and head to bed. So y'all guys all have a good one. We'll talk to you later.